Good morning everyone, how are you all doing today? So I just wanted to really quickly show you my roses. They look absolutely gorgeous at the moment, they're all out in bloom and I think this is possibly one of the best years um, that they've ever looked. That they're just they're really healthy. I've got a few a few aphids, um, but you guys know I don't like using sprays in my garden, so I typically just blast the aphids off with a hose. Um, but I do have a few aphids, and roses are just they are aphids love love roses. They just they just love them. They they you can see here. Um, if my phone will focus, probably not. Um, but yeah, all those little little things are all aphids. But other than that, um, they're looking pretty good. And the ladybirds and, and other beneficial bugs will be around soon to kind of take care of that for me. So I won't have to spray them. I have an organic spray that I use on them, but um, I just prefer to squash them and then um, hose them off anyway. Uh, three of these roses, this is up my driveway, so three of them um, are the original roses that were here when we brought the place and we have replaced a lot of them because they were really old. This one's called Margaret Merrill. If you're not into roses you'll find this video incredibly boring, um, but I'm a massive rose fan. So This one's called Margaret Merrill and this one's called Compassion. These ones are both scented and they're both hybrid teas. This one is uh, a couple of years old and I prefer, it's a very busy part of the morning, it's not quite 8 o'clock in the morning yet and there's a lot of traffic. Um, I prefer the old English roses and they do take a little bit longer to kind of establish than like hybrid teas or floribundas or things like that. So that one's only a couple of years old. They, they, they get better with time. This one's a hybrid tea. Um, this one is called Blackberry Nip and that is scented. There's quite a lot of aphids on that one. You can see it there, I need to squash and wash <laughs> later on. This is called Blue Moon and this is an absolutely, this is a really pale lilac. And that's a hybrid tea. Um, this one was here when we brought the place. This is actually my husband's favourite, he loves the, he loves the shape of this one. And it, it, for a really old rose, um, it's, it's in really good condition. We do look after them pretty well. Um, my husband prunes them and they get fed with rose food and, and all the rest of it. But yeah. Um, so the next three are all English, old English roses. And English roses, um, you can tell you know, by the shape of them. They're really roughly old world. This is a beautiful pale apricot and it fades to a really lovely white but um, this one's about four years old I think and you can sort of see the difference how they improve with age. I need to deheat them um, as well but uh, take the deadheads off so the new ones it produces more blooms. Um, this is called Mary Rose and this is a damask it has a beautiful old world scent. It's another old English one look at the, look at the shape of that and then this one is called LD Braithwaite, and this is one of my favourites. It's another Old English, and it's a beautiful red. You probably can't see that well because of the sun, but I've got a lot of weeding I have to do. I weeded this, no, no lie, two weeks ago um, underneath, but we've had quite a bit of rain, and then followed by lots of warm sunny days, and the weeds just love that type of weather, so... That's a bit better. Yeah, so they're looking, they're looking pretty, pretty good. So I've got lots to pick to bring inside and lots to dry, to use for um, spell work and to make things with and potpourri and all that kind of stuff. I have a couple in pots as well. Um, this one I like to harvest the bud and dry the buds whole because it's a miniature rose so um, I don't mind harvesting the buds on this I wouldn't want to do it on my other ones but but they're, they're really pretty in the bud lovely pink and um, this is a fairy pot that I put together a couple of weeks ago I, well, I redid it I had other things in it that had, that had died 
that it's finished. So this is a miniature gyp softler. Um, I think it looks really pretty. So I've got little little fairy bits and pieces going on in there. And this is a um, perennial petunia. I have shown this before, I think this is called Dracula, this particular one, and it's just the most stunning red. So that will come back year after year. And this is the black one. It's a double, and it is jet. I mean, it's just jet black. So that's awesome. I use that in my craft. Um, I dry the petals and I use it in various workings. So... This is my latest my latest one. This is called Munstead Wood and again it's another old English rose. They're just my favourite. Um, they're just my favourite type of roses. But uh, it's absolutely gorgeous and it has a lovely scent as well. And it's doing it's doing really well. Um, this is the first year that um, well, this is a new rose and they typically um, the, the, they can take a little bit of time to get established. They the first sort of year or so they put their energy into forming their roots and things, um, so you won't get as many blooms over the first sort of one to two years. But this one just seems to have it must just really like where it is. It's quite sheltered, and it gets quite a bit of sun. Um, they don't like to be overcrowded, so I do have to kind of clear out this a little bit. But but yeah, that's that's just gorgeous that one. So. So yeah, I didn't really want to do like a garden share, just a quick kind of look at my roses. But I have to show you these because these are just gorgeous. These poppies, they're just stunning. And poppies look really good mass planted um, like this. So you get like it's just a massive um, drift of them. Well hello Manson. Manson is my little shadow if I am out in the garden. Manson, Manson's there. He's not the most affectionate of cats. He's the, the one that I rescued. Um, he was only three weeks old. He was abandoned, a little abandoned feral kitten. Um, so he's not, like, he loves to be patted and things, but you cannot pick him up and he won't sit on your knee. You're not very grateful, really, are you? <laughs> but he shows his affection in other ways, and if I'm out in the garden, he's, he's always with me. I'm in love with that cat. I'm in love with all my animals, but he's quite special. Because he just would have died if I hadn't have taken him. Anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to wanted to show you my roses. And I hope you're all doing well. How's the weather where you are? Are you coping with, with winter? I know some people have had snow, which is just awful. Me and snow, just no, no I hate snow. Um, the weather here has been a little bit, we're still kind of in that kind of spring. <laughs> and he loves Brago. Brago's not completely impressed with him, but he loves the dog. Yeah, we're kind of in that spring um, weather where it's really settled for a wee while and then it just blows up. So we've had a lot of rain, which is good. It's good for the garden and the paddocks and things. Um, but yeah, apparently we are supposed to have an extremely hot November. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Anyway, must go, must go get ready for work. Uh, I will catch you guys later. Take care. Bye.